Carlito is the first boss in Dead Rising, and he has the lowest health bar of any character in the game, having merely a single block of health. This makes him the only boss that a single handgun can reliably defeat, let alone the shotgun you can scavenge off Brian in the intro, or the SMG you can find hidden around the mall at various points. If guns aren't your forte, there are the hunting and kitchen knives you can find, the baseball bats the trash cans can hide, the frying pans in the food court itself, or the construction supplies you could have brought from the warehouse. And for New Game Plus, there are the two unlockable laser weapons, both of which one-shot him. But while he may be easy to defeat, he's not that easy to approach. Every attack this guy has can stun lock you, and he can cancel his animations to attack you if you're within melee range. So beyond the weapons I've already stated, how many of the mall's weapons can you realistically defeat this guy with? I wanted to know, so I grabbed a level 50 Frank to give every weapon the best possible stats they could have when facing this guy, and just went to town on him. Right away, there are two categories of weapons that can be removed. First are weapons that cannot deal damage in the first place, which is the water gun, the rat saucer, and the queen jar. The second would be most weapons that break on impact when thrown, as Frank needs to be able to throw heavy weapons up there in the first place to even use them on Carlito. Everything else, though, is fair game. There's no tier list this time, simply winners and losers. And with everything I've stated thus far, this is what the chart would look like to begin with. Now that this is established, let's begin. First up is the golf club, which is functionally just a handgun with some quirks. The lack of an aiming reticle makes actually aiming your shots a bit of a pain, but once you figure out how it works, it doesn't take long to take them down. And then there's the sniper rifle. Having infinite range, it's one of the safest, if not one of the slower ways to defeat him. After that is the paint can. It's just a weaker version of the lead pipe in 2x4, so you'll probably get hit more often, but it'll still take him down. Then there's the hedge trimmers. Between its fast attack and its pitiful range, it's a strong but very inconsistent means of fighting him. Or anything, for that matter. I then beat him down with a toolbox, which is just another whacking item with okay power, so he falls in no time. After that, I broke some toolboxes for the saw blades. They're... one of the harder weapons to beat him with, actually. The damage is good, but not great, and you have to retrieve them to use them again. And actually getting past him to do that is harder than it sounds, but it can be done. There's the Sickle, which is just a good weapon in general, and it has one of the faster attacks with decent range. But after that is the Shovel. Its normal attack only does 65 damage. Uh, context, Carlito has a thousand health. It's primarily meant to just knock zombies out of the way instead of killing them, and the Strike Down attack can't hit anything standing up. So normally the Shovel cannot realistically defeat Carlito, until you think to throw it. Then there's a Propane Tank. This one's strange. I only recorded trying the small one, because the large ones are too heavy to reliably get up there. But the large green ones on Trolley do have slightly higher stats, both for melee and the explosion itself. It'll take four small propane tanks, or three large green ones, exploding to defeat Carlito. While you could be patient and eventually beat him, it's not worth the effort given the difficulty of even getting one of these up there. While someone more determined than me could beat him with this, and the large ones do do enough melee damage to down him in only one hit, assuming you can actually land it, I'm counting this one as a loser given how its intended use as an explosive is not a reliable way to beat him. While I was up there, I also tried the cardboard box that spawns upside with him. It's weak and breaks if he hits you at all, and it breaks incredibly quickly to begin with. So, no, that's a loser too. The shower head actually took a bit of experimenting, but I was able to wreck him with this surprisingly effectively thanks to how fast the jab attack goes. Turns out there's no lag between attempts to stab zombies with this thing, so if it doesn't stick into someone's head, you can just keep using it. It's not ideal, but surprisingly enough it worked. The dumbbell was clunky, but it did drop him eventually. The barbell sadly wasn't able to land a killing blow on him thanks to its windup, and the fact that Carlito can attack faster than Frank can often move. But if I had just settled for throwing it at him, putting my pride aside and not trying to land a last melee hit, I would have beaten him. Then there's the chainsaw. Honestly, getting it up there is the difficult part. Once it is up there with Carlito, it's hardly a fight. Then there's the bucket, which was way more effective than I was expecting, actually. It's not a strong weapon, mind you, but it got the job done. This actually turned out to be true for every helmet weapon in the game, although the traffic cone's low durability was a bit of a nuisance. 
The cash register was not a great melee weapon to use against him, but at max level, simply throwing one at him will kill him instantly. Sadly, my efforts with the fence and the chairs were far less successful. The fence will almost always be broken because of its attack animation, and Carlito's melee attack getting priority, which will instantly destroy it. The same goes for the small chairs, and the big chairs I couldn't even get up there in the first place. The parasol doesn't do enough damage with its melee attack to make it really worth anything, and a single bullet will instantly destroy it. But after I got it lodged up there and Carlito ended up trapped on one side, unable to push it, I realized that it was my perfect chance to defeat him with spit. The shower had got me optimistic about beating Carlito with the hangers, but it just wasn't working. Guess I couldn't get the hang of it. Actually, no, the damage on these things suck. So I elected to beat him using Frank himself instead. When it came time to use the bench, I actually managed to hit him with it as I threw it up there, so free damage before I benched him. I tried using the ketchup and hot sauce found in the food court to beat him, but no luck. The canned food and the canned sauces, on the other hand, actually was able to beat him, surprisingly effectively too. The fire extinguisher's main function can't deal any damage, but it hurts a lot if you throw one. If you stockpile enough of them and throw them hard enough, it will kill him. Both the broom and the mailbox were able to defeat him with relative ease, regardless if I was smashing or stabbing him. The baking ingredients are not very strong, but they were strong enough to work. Both the canned drinks and the plates work as improvised guns, and honestly were better than the handgun at beating him. And since I'm in the mood to just lob crap at him, I decided to just beat him by throwing wine at him, and it does work, though you'll need to re-enter the food court to get enough to do it. Up next was a string of items that were surprisingly effective. The handbag may have bad damage, but it's remarkably fast on the attack. And the cooking oil turns out to be an okay melee weapon with a maxed out frame. And the small potted plants that actually fit in your inventory did way more damage than I was expecting. Though I probably shouldn't be surprised. If they break in one hit, they better do good damage. The gemstones are a makeshift shotgun with a DPS that's far more S than D. But when stockpiled, you will eventually and I mean eventually, defeat him. The two cosmetic props, on the other hand, are just decent melee weapons. I knew that going in. In fact, they're some of the best improvised weapons in the game when Frank is at a high to max level. The wind streak is officially killed with the painting, however. It does poor damage, it takes too long to pick up if you drop it, and he'll probably just break it when he kicks you. Thankfully, the toy cubes were able to defeat him, although their physics can be very uncooperative in terms of where they bounce off to. This gave me some hope for the stuffed animals, but it may as well do no damage, and it basically can't stun Carlito. After that letdown, I tried the bowling ball. Its throwing animation made it hard to use at close range, which I found myself stuck in quite a bit. But after a bit of patience and a bit of dumb luck, I was able to take him down. Then there's the stun gun, which you actually don't need to defeat Joe to get. You can find them in cardboard boxes. It's honestly more effective against Carlito than it is most zombies. After that, I beat Carlito with a rock, and it's as effective as beating a guy to death with a rock. That is to say, very. So I then move on to use the boomerang. It works, but not because of its ability to return back to Frank, uh, more so in spite of it. It was not meant for this, <laughs> that is clear. The soccer ball thankfully works much better than either the toy cube or the boomerang. I don't know if I just got lucky or what. Then there's the fish, that at max level kills him in two hits. The excavator, on the other hand, didn't even need to attack him once I got it up there. The damage from simply being active and running around him was able to do the job. In my opinion, this was the funniest way to defeat him. Then there's the sword in North Plaza, which is just an easy win. The pet food from the supermarket was a noticeably less easy win, but it was still a win. The same cannot be said for the hunk of meat, which is way too slow. Or the shampoo, which is too weak, and both break before I could really do anything. Now, for the next one, I'm just gonna let you see how the results end. After that, I decided since I was basically running him over at this point, I would use the skateboard. I needed a book to get this done, but I did get it done. If you're wondering about the shopping cart or the weapons cart, we'll get to those later. All four of the guitars work on him, but the acoustic guitar is the most effective, 
like it is for the rest of the game. The CDs are just the worst plates, and the rat stick is just a worse lead pipe. But they both were able to take him down thanks to Frank being at a max level. Strangely enough, the toy Mega Buster was not the worst ranged weapon I had used against Carlito at this point, as just two of them were able to reliably take him down. And remember, it's a gun, so it's not affected by Frank's level ups. I never would have guessed that a tennis ball gun would have worked better than gemstones, but life is strange. The plywood was also a good choice thanks to its absurd range, and can even hit from behind the safe spot. Then there's the fire axe, which is just a better version of the rock. The nail gun is another surprisingly good ranged weapon against Carlito specifically, thanks to its large ammo reserve. This actually makes it more reliable than the handgun at defeating him. Sadly, the various sandwich signs you find lying around are too weak, too slow, and too heavy to work against Carlito. Then there's the toy laser sword, which is... interesting. Its durability isn't a huge issue, it's the damage and attack speed that aren't good. I got him down to a third of his health and called it, I used up literally all the healing items in the place. I'm willing to count this as a win, because if I better stocked up on energizers with the first health book, I would have been able to take him down. But, man was this tedious. The store display in the gun shop functions more or less like the plywood. And if I was just a little more reserved when I attacked, this would have easily killed him. Each mannequin piece is pretty useful, but the torso is king. But all of them can defeat him. The nightstick is a bit wonky, but its DPS is good once you get a good groove going. The stepladder may not be as strong as you want it to, but it has better than average reach as far as melee weapons go, so it's actually a decent way to take him down while staying out of the range of his kicks. You know, provided you know what you're doing. Now for a little trick. This mission never expires, no matter how long you take. Which means, I can just wait out the clock for the Psychopath missions to start. So, weapons that you normally can't get in a canonical playthrough of the story, and were probably never meant to use against him, are now available. And so Carlito is utterly annihilated by the small chainsaw, the heavy machine gun, the machete, the ceremonial sword, and the Molotov cocktails. And, thanks to the gun trio, even the machine gun from the Special Forces can be grabbed and used on him. This marks the end of the individual weapons I can use against Carlito. In the story mode. If we jump to the infinity mode, a few more options open up in the entrance plaza, which otherwise requires defeating Carlito's first phase to get in the first place. So the battle axe, despite its unwieldy nature, slays him fairly quickly. The pickaxe also gets to take its fair share of chunks out of him as well. And, since Larry spawns early enough, I can defeat him and take the meat cleaver to Carlito and literally chop him down to size. I did try to use items I otherwise couldn't use against his first phase on the second and third phases, but the results were pretty middling. The hockey stick is actually the preferred way to defeat his sniper form, so that was easy. But that's because of how hard he is to approach. His rifle can instantly destroy any heavy weapon you carry. And if he shoots the gun and misses, he's programmed to start his five-round auto-fire. The shelving units are slow to attack, and he can easily destroy them. But you only need to land two hits with them to defeat him. The only other heavy weapon that really benefited from this was the shopping cart, which got him down to literally one hit before death, before my luck ran out and I couldn't land a last hit to save my life. Almost literally. Similarly, the weapons cart was able to get him to critical health in the truck battle, so it counts as a success. But man, actually landing a melee hit against this guy feels like more of a dice roll than drinking randomizer. I only managed to get as far as I did because two of my ten pushes happened to be at the perfect angle, and the rest of the time, the cart did nothing. Now for this final results screen, a lot of the weapons in the loser category could have actually defeated Carlito later on if I was more persistent. But that's why the categories are winners and losers, not possible versus impossible, or my usual tier list shtick. Since Carlito's health doesn't reset when you leave the area, and the timer for the first mission is irrelevant, for this challenge at least, any weapon that you can fit in your pocket and that actually deals damage will eventually beat him if you take enough time. And the sniper battle can be beaten with any combination of heavy weapons if you're lucky and persistent enough. I just wanted to draw the line somewhere. This video reminded me why I don't like Carlito as an actual boss. He can react faster than most of Frank's animations play out, he can cancel his reload animations to attack Frank, and once his attack animation starts, it can't be interrupted. This is also true for the later fights, except he doesn't need to reload in the first place for those, so lovely. 
This results in me beating him the same way every time I play the game. I beat him with the SMG in the food court, I beat him with the hockey stick in the entrance plaza, and I beat him with the ceremonial sword in the underground. It's actually what led to me making this video, just a curiosity to see how many different ways I could personally defeat him before my patience wore out. But when I get to making that tier list for the Psychopaths of the Dead Rising franchise, don't expect Carlito to rank very highly on it.